Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I want to show you how to set up Steam streaming on your Raspberry Pi running RetroPie. I'm using a Raspberry Pi 3 with RetroPie 4.1 installed. We're going to be installing Moonlight on the Raspberry Pi running RetroPie and we'll be able to stream our Steam games to our Raspberry Pi, kind of like a Steam Link. Before you get excited, there are certain requirements your PC needs to meet. You will need a GeForce graphics card or an NVIDIA GTX 650 and up graphics card. I have a GTX 1060 6GB in this PC here. You'll need GeForce Experience installed and you'll also need Steam installed and running for this to start. Install GeForce Experience if you're not sure what card you have or if you're not sure you're able to stream at all. You can install GeForce Experience as long as you have an NVIDIA card. Go to Settings, Game Stream, and you'll be able to see here GeForce GTX Desktop GPU 600 series or higher. Checked, checked. I'm going to be using Ethernet here, but you will need a good router to stream over Wi Fi to your Raspberry Pi. I do recommend using Ethernet, it is much faster and reliable. Make sure you have Steam installed. You can just go ahead and launch Steam. And the last thing we'll need from our PC is the IP address. I'm running Windows 10 and it's very easy to get your IP address from Windows 10. Click on the Windows icon, go to Settings, Network and Internet. I'm on Wi-Fi right now and if I click on this, if I scroll down my IP address will be listed here. And I'm not going to show it, but it's right underneath here. It'll show me my IP. It'll be like 192-168-10-156, something like that. Make sure you have Steam running. We're going to be moving to the Raspberry Pi. So all of this can be done on the Raspberry Pi from Terminal. But we could also install an application called Putty on our PC and connect remotely to our Raspberry Pi. It makes life so much easier. But for right now, we're just going to move to the Pi, then we're going to come back. I'm going to show you what we need to install, and we'll run through all the commands. It's actually very simple. We're going to create a Steam icon as a launcher in our Retro Pi system. Let's move to the Pi now. So I'm back at the Pi, and before you edit or add anything that is not in the experimental menu in the Retro Pi setup, I do recommend backing up your Retro Pi image in case something goes wrong. You can always reflash your backup, and you'll be back to normal. So this is RetroPie 4.1. It's a fresh install. We're just going to go to RetroPie. And I definitely recommend grabbing your IP address from your Raspberry Pi. Since we're going to be doing this over network, there's a chance you may need your IP address to connect. If you would like to do this all on the Raspberry Pi, you totally can. But it's going to take longer because I created a text document that we can copy and paste if we're using a PC to do this. So much simpler, but if you want to type everything out, you can do that. No problem. Press F4 on your keyboard, and it will bring you here. What I'm going to be doing is going back to the PC. We're going to install PuTTY, and then we're going to get this up and running. Okay, let's get started here, guys. You can do all of this on your Raspberry Pi from within the terminal if you press F4 while you're using your Raspberry Pi. But I've made it simple for you guys. I created a text document here. Everything we need to get a Steam icon on the front menu and launch our Steam streaming games. My Raspberry Pi is connected to the same network as this PC. It needs to be, even if you're on Wi-Fi, even if you're on Ethernet. I created a text document that you can download from the link in the description. This is everything we will need to get Steam up and streaming on our Raspberry Pi using RetroPie. The first thing we're going to need to do is enable streaming on our PC. We'll open up GeForce Experience. We'll go to Settings. Go down here to Shield and make sure Game Stream is turned on. I'm just going to minimize this. Now we're going to open up that text document and we're just going to go download PuTTY. Copy and I'm just going to open up a browser. I will grab the PuTTY.exe. I'm going to drag it onto my desktop and close my browser. We'll open PuTTY, run. We're going to need to connect to the Raspberry Pi. 
Make sure SSH is checked here. And in the host name, you can either type in the IP address of your Raspberry Pi or all capital Retro Pi. Hit open. Yes. Now you're going to log in as Pi, P I, and our password is Raspberry. Now, as you can see, it looks just like our Raspberry Pi when we hit F4 on our keyboard. Let's open up that text document, pull it over to the side. And I made this tutorial so you could just copy and paste. If you want to do this over the Pi, it's going to take you a lot longer. Let's get into it. It's very simple this way. Pseudo nano. We're going to go into our source list here. Press enter. From here, we're going to scroll down with our keyboard. We're going to add a new source. This is the Moonlight source. After we paste this new source, press Control X on your keyboard, Y, and Enter. We've added a new source. Now we want to update that. So we're going to go to sudo apt git update, press Enter. And this could take a little while depending on the speed of your internet and how good the servers are working at the time of doing this. We're going to install Moonlight now. sudo apt git install Moonlight embedded. Press Y when you're prompted and enter. And you're going to have to press Y and enter again. Now we're going to go to our RetroPie configs directory by cd space slash opt slash RetroPie slash configs. Copy, paste. We're going to create a new directory called Moonlight. So mkdir, which is make directory, we're going to name it Moonlight. We're going to go into that newly created directory by cd moonlight. From here, we need to map our controller. So I have an Xbox 360 controller connected to my Raspberry Pi 3 right now. Obviously, it's still running in the background because we're using the terminal here. This will map our controller. So we're going to copy moonlight map controller dot map. Press enter. So follow the on-screen prompts. Left stick right, left stick up, left stick in, which will be your L3 button. This is your right stick, right, up, D-pad, right, down. Press your X button, A, B, Y. Back is select, start, and I'm using the special button as my Xbox button right in the middle. Left trigger, right trigger, left bumper, right bumper. Now we created a config for our controller. Right here, we need to connect Moonlight to our PC. You need to replace all the X's with your IP address, whatever the IP address of your gaming PC is. And I showed you how to do that at the very beginning. So we'll do Moonlight pair. 192-168-10- whatever your IP is. After you've typed your IP in, press enter. Now it's going to pop this screen up as long as you have NVIDIA GeForce Experience running. Down here it gave us a pin. 2898. Yours is going to be different. Click connect. And we successfully paired the Pi with our PC. Now we need to go back to our home directory. We can do that by typing in this command. Now we're going to create an icon on our front menu of RetroPie. We can do that by sudo nano space slash etc slash emulation station slash es underscore systems dot config. Copy. From here. I do recommend scrolling all the way to the bottom, and it really sucks scrolling that far, so I'm not going to do it. I'm going to go down right underneath System List. I'm going to press Enter to make a space. 
press up, and I'm going to copy from system to system. Copy, and I'm going to paste it right there. Now, while we're still in this screen, we'll press Control X on our keyboard, Y to save, and enter. We need to create a ROMs directory for Moonlight. MKDIR, and this will create a ROMs directory. It'll be in with all of your ROMs, like your SNES and things like that. We now need to CD into that directory. We need to go to that directory we just created. And from here, we're going to create a start config. sudo nano stream 30fps.sh. This will create a new sh file within our ROMs directory. Now you're just going to copy all of this, but at the very end, you're going to replace those X's with your IP address. It'll look just like this. Just replace the last three digits after 10 dot with the rest of your IP address. Control X, Y, enter. We're going to create a 60 FPS config now. sudo nano stream 60 FPS dot SH. Same thing here, replace the last three digits with the last three digits of your IP address. Control, X, Y, Enter. Now we need to make both of these executable. sudo chmod plus X stream 30 FPS dot SH, Enter. And we're going to make the 60 FPS executable also. Copy, paste, enter. We're done. You can type exit. It's going to shut down putty. We're going to move to the Raspberry Pi and I'll show you that we'll be able to stream my Steam here. And I don't have many games because I don't do any modern gaming. But I have a few that use the controller. We're going to move to the Pi now and I'll show you that Steam streaming is working. On your main menu, you should now have a Steam logo. If it's still blank, press start, go to quit, and restart emulation station. We're going to go to the Steam. Inside of here, you can choose to stream at 30 FPS or 60 FPS. I'm going to go with 60. And we are now streaming from my gaming PC. So I'll go to my library. And I told you I don't have a lot of stuff. But Brawlhalla is a game that works with a controller. And I really wish we could go back to the desktop. There are a few little tricks that you can do to go back to the desktop. But normally you'll just use Steam in big picture mode. Custom online. I'll just go to single player versus bots. leave match. So these need to be controller based games. You can play with a keyboard as long as the keyboard is connected to your PC still. So it's a little weird like that, but a lot of the stuff does support controllers. Scrap mechanics doesn't. And if you see the little icon, you can see it does support a controller. This one doesn't. This partially does, but it's mainly made for a keyboard. And sound is working on my end from my TV here that I have my Pi connected to. We'll go back. Up at the top. Stop streaming. And there we have it. We can also launch it at 30 FPS.
But that's it guys, I really appreciate you watching. If you could, hit that like button and subscribe. If you need any help at all, let me know and I'll try my hardest to get back to you. It's pretty simple if you do it over PuTTY. If you want to try to type every command out in the terminal on the Raspberry Pi, be my guest. Go ahead and try it. If you mess up one little thing, if you put the wrong semicolon somewhere or you make a letter capital that shouldn't be capital, the stream will not work. Everything needs to be perfect. That's why I created the text document. Like always, thanks for watching.